Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA a certification training course on troubleshooting power supplies. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements from our Practical Application Exam 22702, Section 1.2, where we need to detect problems, troubleshoot, and repair slash replace personal computer components, and we're focusing on power supplies. What's interesting about power supplies in a computer is you're very rarely repairing a power supply. What you're doing is removing the entire power supply and really replacing it. We never open up the details of what's inside a power supply and work with the internals of it. These devices are relatively inexpensive to replace, and the danger is just too high that something could go wrong with the power. So generally, we stay out of the power supply repair business. Instead, what we're doing is using tools to help troubleshoot whether the power supply should really be replaced or not. So very uh, a huge amount of this particular video will be talking about what you should do and what tools you can use to help understand if you really should be replacing that power supply. One thing you should really have in your bag of tools is the circuit tester. This is one that I happen to have. They're very common. They're very, very simplistic, but they can give you a perspective of how the power is right there at the outlet. So this is one obviously designed for the United States, you can see the outlet connections here. And it has lights on the front of it that will tell you whether there's an open ground or an open neutral or an open hot. If everything's correct, it's going to have these two ye yellow or amber lights lit on the side of it. So when you plug it in, I turned all the lights off for this. So you can see those lights light up. The red is not lit. The two ambers is. So therefore, it is correct. It's a very quick uh, way to tell very quickly when you plug into that outlet, is this outlet OK? Is it one that I should be using for what I'm doing? I don't know the voltages in here. I don't know the exact numbers of how much power is really coming out of this particular outlet. But I can very quickly tell whether, first, I'm getting power out of the outlet. Because if nothing comes on here, I, I know that there's no power connected to this at all. And I could also plug this in and at least understand, is this something that's OK for me to plug into? Or is any of these connections not wired properly? And that can be really useful if you're plugging in on a connection you've never connected to before. This is a nice little quick test that you can have and something you can keep in your bag just to, to test with. Ultimately, you may be in a position where you really need to test very, very detailed information about the power that's coming out of a wall outlet, the power that's coming into a power supply, the the power amounts coming out of a power supply. And really, the best way to tell that is with a multimeter. This is my multimeter that I use. It's one that I picked up relatively inexpensively. It looks like it, all these, these different dials and the digital connections, the digital display up here, it seems like it would be very expensive, but it wasn't. Uh, you can find these very, very reasonably priced in the United States. $25 or less will get you a very, very nice uh, multimeter. Multimeter prices go way up into the hundreds of dollars for people that use these for very professional uses. But for what we're doing, this is really all we need. Just get an idea of what's going on. You'll also have with this a couple of probes that come with it. Uh, they are usually colored a red and a black. So you know um, that you can use one for positive and negative. And the instructions that come with your multimeter will give you different options and different ways you could plug in usually to the multimeter pieces. So the multimeter itself has a lot of different functionality. If we zoom up here on all of these different dials in the front, you've got the ability to do voltages. And you can see from our previous videos, you can see some of the symbols that you're accustomed to seeing, the DC symbol, the AC symbol. Here's one that has a little chime on it that checks to make sure that the connection is there. You're able to look at it and and see if there is continuity all the way through a wire. So you can tell if a wire is broken or if uh, two connections on a cable really don't connect to each other, you'll know. If you, they connect, you'll get a, a ringing noise. That's what that tone is for. If they don't connect, it's an open link, then you, you won't hear anything. And there's a lot of other connectivities and a lot of other uh, tests on here that you could use to be able to tell how much power is going through a particular device, for instance. Well, before we get into really using the multimeter, one important thing to keep in mind is that we're dealing with power here. Power can be extremely dangerous to work with. If you touch the wrong thing, if you do the wrong thing, your computer could kill you. It's a, a very, very delicate situation. So be very, very careful when you're working with the multimeter that you know exactly what you're connecting to. Don't let those two probes of the multimeter touch. If you're in, down there and connecting to something, make sure those probes are not getting near each other. You'll notice that they have some plastic around them to help prevent them from touching each other. If you connect and short out a connection, you'll get a nice spark there. You don't want to create problems or 
or damage what you're trying to test, and you certainly don't want to shock yourself. If there are any questions about what you're doing, don't touch it. If there's something that needs to be resolved and you feel like it's outside the realm of what you should be working on, just call a licensed electrician and they'll come in and have a look at that. If we're testing a power supply, we're going to want to know if the power supply is really getting the right amount of power from the power source. And this is a power outlet in the United States. I apologize for the people outside of the United States, but you can use the same type of methodology to use anywhere you might go in the world. You'll need to know, obviously, what the different settings are, what these different connections are on your outlets. You also need to get a little bit of information about what you should expect to see coming out of your outlet. In some countries, it's 120 volts. In some countries, it's 240 volts and it may be something entirely different where you are. In the United States, we have these three connectors on a power outlet. There's a neutral connector, a hot connector, and a ground down here at the bottom. Now that we know that, we can start working with this outlet to determine if it's wired correctly and if we're seeing the proper amount of voltage. And the way that we do that is we grab our multimeter. I've got mine selected to the amount of voltage of AC. That's the symbol, and that's what I've connected to on this multimeter, and I've just plugged in these probes that are on my multimeter directly into the top connectors there on the outlet, and it's telling me that there is 120.2 volts of AC power available on this particular outlet. So I know immediately if this is, I'm looking for 120 volts, I'm getting it. I'm getting exactly what I should expect. If this number was 100 or this number was 140, this may raise some questions about whether the power coming through this particular outlet really is proper, whether you're really getting what you should expect to get out of that connection. 120 is exactly what I would expect to see. Now, if I plug in on the ground connection down here on the bottom and I plug into the neutral connection, those should not have any voltages going through them. And if I look, indeed, I'm getting zero voltage out of them. So I know those must be wired properly. If I get any amount of voltage, when I start looking at the power between those two, I know there's a problem in the wiring. And if I check my ground to hot, my hot is on the right side of my outlet and ground obviously still down there at the bottom, you'll see that I'm getting 120 volts across those particular connections. That is exactly what I would expect to see in that particular case. Now, if we know that the power coming out of our outlet is working properly, what about the power that's coming out of the power supply? Let's see if the power coming out on the other end is exactly what we would expect. You can uh, either use the connections that are coming right out of the power supply. If it's something that's already connected to the motherboard, you could also test to see how the power is going to the motherboard, and that's what I've done here. I've connected to a couple of pins on the power supply that's going directly into the motherboard. I've got one pin plugged into a ground connection, and the other pin looks like a plugged into pin number four, it looks like, on this particular display. It's kind of hard to see on this picture, but I believe that's where I am. And if you look, pin four should give me five volts of power. And indeed, I'm getting 5.03 volts on my multimeter here. So I can expect that I'm actually getting the right amount of voltage going into my motherboard. You can, of course, test the connections on your Molex connectors, test connections on your floppy drive connectors, on your SATA connectors. You can really test a lot of different pieces on here with the multimeter. And it really is an indispensable tool to use to be able to determine how, how is my power supply really working for me? Is it really giving me the right voltage or not? Is it, should every single connection on there work properly? properly, then you can feel pretty good that your power supply is doing exactly what you expect it to do. Let's see what we've learned about troubleshooting our power supplies. Our first question is, what is a good basic tool for testing a power outlet? Well, if we don't want to go the multimeter route, we know that we could use one of those really nice circuit testers, plug right in, get a valid setting, and then you can remove it and go to the next outlet. Our next question is, what AC voltage should be seen on a typical US outlet? In the United States, the amount of voltage coming out of the wall should be around 120 volts. And if it isn't, we need to call an electrician. And last question, what current type is output from a PC power supply? There's a certain current we're expecting to come out of the power supply. We're obviously putting AC power into the power supply. On the other side, we should expect to see direct current, DC power coming out of the power supply. That covers what we needed to know for our 227.02 section 1.2. At this point, you should be able to go through and troubleshoot your power supplies and know if it's really providing you with the power that you would expect. If you want to look at any of our other free A-plus videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.